The Lord be with you. I'm glad you're joining me to hear the word of the Lord on this fifth Sunday in Lent. Today in our readings, we'll hear a theme of resurrection from the dead, about how God gives life to those who are dead. God breathes into us by his Holy Spirit, also called the Spirit of the Lord. Also, as we say in the Nicene Creed, the Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life. And Ezekiel will see this strange vision of a a valley full of dry bones and how the Lord tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the Spirit. That means to speak God's word, to give God's command for the Holy Spirit to come and to fill the bones and to give them life. And God says, this is a picture for you, Ezekiel, of all the house of Israel. That means even including you and me today, all those who will believe in him and look to him to give us life. The uh, Paul will uh, tell the Romans in our epistle reading for today that it is because we have the spirit of God in us that gives us life, that we live in that life and not in the life of the flesh, the sinful flesh, which is corrupted by sin and doomed to die. We're given new life in Christ by the Holy Spirit, and that's the life we live. And then, of course, we'll uh, hear in our gospel reading for today about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead and how the Lord is the one who gives life to the dead. And Jesus says his famous words, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha expresses to Jesus the very hope that we have, the certainty of faith. And that is, she says, I know my brother uh, Lazarus will rise again on the last day. And Jesus says, I'm the one who's coming on that last day. And I am the resurrection. I am the one who will give life to all the dead. That's what we look forward to. That's our hope. That is what we, especially as we're getting closer to Jesus going to the cross, to die on the cross for us, that we keep that in mind. It is the Lord, our God, who gives us life, the Holy Spirit. And even if we should die, the Lord will raise us from the dead. Let's begin now with our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we confess that we have failed to admit that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and deeds. We have denied our faults to you, to our neighbors, and even to ourselves. We have wandered away from your will and rule. We have taken your blessings for granted. For Jesus' sake, forgive us, renew in us a desire to please you, and restore us to the path you would have us take in our life's journey. Because our Savior paid for our sins with his passion and death, and because our Father in heaven accepted his sacrifice and raised him on the third day, all who return and call out in Jesus' name receive grace and mercy. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice. He has heard my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent is written in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live and I will lay sinews upon you, 
and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a sound and behold a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone and I looked and behold there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them then he said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man and say to the breath thus says the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe on these slain that they may live so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army then he said to me son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel behold they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost we are in, indeed cut off therefore prophesy and say to them thus says the Lord God behold I will open your graves and raise you from your graves O my people and I will bring you into the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves O my people and I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the gradual for the season of Lent. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Roman Christians, the 8th chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the verse of the day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, but for your sake I'm glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even not now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews were, who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary quickly rise and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Where do you see yourself falling on the faith scale? On a scale from 0 to 10, with a 0 being a total unbeliever who doesn't understand or believe anything about God or the Bible, and 10 being the most perfect, faithful Christian possible, where would you put yourself on that scale? Now, if you were a 0, 1, or 2, you probably wouldn't even be listening to this sermon right now, or even come to church when you could. If you were a 10, you probably wouldn't be in church either or listening to this sermon because you'd already know it all and have perfect faith already. And so I would guess that you're, if you're anything like me, probably put yourself somewhere in the middle, right? Maybe the up, upper part of the middle, but even so. It's true that we believe in God and in his son Jesus, whom he has sent. We believe that Jesus has died on the cross to forgive us our sins and to give us eternal life in heaven. And we also believe that we are still sinners. We need a lot of forgiveness every day. And there are many things about God that we don't fully understand. Oh, well, we understand and believe the basics, but we know there's still a lot more we have to learn. We're like that man who begged Jesus to help his demon-possessed son. He said to Jesus, if you can do anything, help. And Jesus replied, if you can. Now the Lord knew that this man had come to him for help and that he was looking to the Lord in faith, which is good and right. And yet Jesus also knew this man didn't fully understand who it was he was asking for help. Jesus told him, all things are possible for the one who believes. And so the man replied, I do believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. Now, our scripture readings for today are full of people like that. They think they understand. They believe in the Lord and his miraculous power and work. But there's so much more that they don't understand. There's so much more that they don't yet believe. And we might find ourselves in these people in our readings for today. Let's start with the prophet Ezekiel in our Old Testament reading. God gives him this strange vision of a valley full of dry bones. And to Ezekiel, this looks like an extremely helpless and desolate place. And God asks Ezekiel if the, all these bones, skeletons lying around, very dry, if they can live. Now, put yourself in Ezekiel's place and imagine what he's thinking at this point. God is showing me here all these dead, dried out bones and asking me if they can live. Well, I don't see any way that they could. But then again, this is God talking to me. So who am I to tell God what he can or can't do? Now, if hard pressed, you and I, just like Ezekiel, would surely confess that, yes, God, you can do anything, even making dry bones live again. But who could possibly conceive of such a thing? It's like, I know God can do anything, but even this is beyond my little imagination. And so Ezekiel answers God, not saying what he may have been tempted to say, I don't know, which was really the answer, you know. But Ezekiel said, Oh Lord, you know. It's like saying to God, I know you can do anything, Lord, but I can't see a solution to my problem. I can't see the way. But I know that you see what I can't see. And you know what I don't know. So show me, teach me, Lord. That was the kind of faith that Jesus' disciples had too. They were warning Jesus that the Jews were, had been trying to kill him in Jerusalem. And they're warning, 
Are you sure you should go back there? They're trying to kill you. Shouldn't it be their duty to try to protect Jesus? The Lord had warned them already that in Jerusalem he would be put to death. But they didn't really understand what he was telling them. They didn't see how that could be a good thing or how that should be somehow part of God's plan. How could they know? How could they understand? They believed in Jesus. They knew that he was the Savior sent by God, that he had come to save the world. But there was so much they didn't understand. How could they conceive of what God was going to do through Jesus, that he would save the world by himself dying? How could they know? And so when they realized that Jesus is not going to be talked out of going to Jerusalem, Thomas says, almost sarcastically, well, let's go with Jerusalem. We're probably going to get killed along with him. Let's go and die with him. Now Thomas sensed, he knew, he believed that Jesus would die in Jerusalem. Somehow he understood that part. And he was afraid that that meant that they all would be killed along with Jesus. <laughs> and Thomas is right. He has no idea how right he is. Jesus would die for all of our sins, and we sinners will be who are connected to Christ, his followers. We also will be crucified along with Christ, so that new people may be raised from the dead along with Christ when he's raised from the dead. One day Thomas would understand that, but not yet. How could he? The faith is there, but there's so much that the disciples didn't understand. And I think you and I find ourselves in the same boat so many times. That's the kind of faith that the sisters Mary and Martha had in our gospel reading for today, Lazarus's sisters. It's funny that they both say the same thing when, when they greet Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I think they knew Jesus had only been two miles away. He could have gotten here in a half an hour if he wanted to. And yet he waited days to come. Lord, if you had been here, why weren't you, Lord? My brother would not have died. Oh, Mary, oh, Martha, you have no idea how right you are. It's the same with the people in verse 37 who said, Couldn't he who have opened the eyes of the blind man kept this man, Lazarus, from dying? It's true. And you are exactly right, people. But you have no idea how right you are. There's so much that you don't understand yet about Jesus. Not only could Jesus have kept Lazarus from dying, but he can and does keep each and every one of us, you and me, from dying by giving us eternal life. And that's the lesson that Jesus is teaching us today. Jesus has come to give us life so that we will never die. Now we, like Martha, have a lot to learn. She said to Jesus, even now, though, Lord, I know that whatever you ask from God, he will give it to you. So it makes us wonder, what is Martha hoping here when she says that whatever you ask from God, God will give it to you? What's she hoping for? Could she possibly believe that the Lord will raise her brother Lazarus from the dead? Maybe. Maybe even Martha herself doesn't know what she's hoping for, though. She believes, but there's a lot yet that she doesn't understand. And when Jesus comes right out and tells her, as plain as can be, your brother will rise again, she responds with a good and faithful answer. Well, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Ah, you are right, Martha. 
but there's so much more that you don't understand. She's right that God's goal and plan will finally be accomplished at the last day when all the dead are raised and when the Lord makes the entire creation new again. That's God's goal, and she's exactly right. Oh, that we all had the faith to eagerly wait for the last day like Martha when God will fulfill all of his promises. Martha's waiting for the resurrection and for God's saving power. But Jesus says what she doesn't understand yet. God's resurrection, God's saving power is already here because I'm here. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he die, yet shall he live. And in fact, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. God's promise of breaking the power of sin and death in the world by taking away our death from us, giving us eternal life, his promise of making all things new again. These things have already begun in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, verse 35 of our gospel reading for today, it's the shortest verse in the entire Bible. I can say it from memory, can you? Jesus wept. Whew, boy, that was hard. A short verse, yes, but it says so much. The Lord knows what a devastating thing that death is in the world. Sin has corrupted everything. Death ruins everything that God made this good world to be. The Lord knows that death is a terrible thing, and that's why he wept. Jesus also knows that God sent him to make all things new through his death and through his resurrection. And through Christ, God has taken away our death and he gives us life. Now Martha knew that she'd seen her brother again in the resurrection at the last day. Good for you, Martha. But Jesus, who is now present among us, himself is the resurrection and the life. Martha believed she had the right attitude, but how could she have understood? How could she even conceive of who this Jesus is who is standing right in front of her? You and I see. You and I, too, though, have a lot to learn, along with Martha and with Jesus' disciples and, and even with the prophet Ezekiel. We believe in God, We've heard of his almighty power, but how can our little minds conceive of what he has in store for us? Who has conceived what God has in store? God is able to do so much more than we ask or imagine. We've been taught all our lives correctly that Jesus died on the cross to take away our death and to give us eternal life. But do you really realize what this means? You are already living forever. You will never die. We know that. We believe that. But do you really understand? Can you grasp it? When you die, it's just going to be going to sleep. When Jesus comes to wake you up, you'll wake up and he'll bring you home to heaven. We know, we believe these things. But do we really realize what it is that we have right now? Our Lord Jesus, our God, is present with us even now. Sin is driven away. Death is defeated. We stand victorious. We have life. Life that never ends. We are truly invincible. Think about that. So what does all this mean for our lives? It's hard to conceive. There's so much we don't yet understand. But we pray to the Lord that he would open our eyes to see, open our hearts to believe. Having the Lord Christ present with us, 
There is nothing that we can't accomplish. Living the life that he gives is totally different than the life that this world has to offer. Our lives can never be ordinary and we can never view ourselves as failures. Jesus is with us. Jesus is making all things new, starting with you and me. New. Believe the unbelievable. Conceive the unconceivable. Because in Jesus Christ, we have it all. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all that we can understand, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess the faith that we share with all Christians everywhere with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we pray as Christ our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Praise the 